Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here. I hope you had a very good Christmas break. How was your Christmas break? My Christmas break was fantastic. Even better, <clears throat> Santa came and got us one out of two. Well, he got us two beautiful old Delta drill presses. We're about to unload the first one and then go pick up the second one. Looks like a pretty heavy duty little thing. For the past couple of years, I've just been using the Bridgeport mill that I used to have in the UK as, uh, as for all my drilling needs. So it's gonna be nice to have a couple of floor standing drill presses. You know, I can have some of the common size bits in each one. Will is doing all the work while I talk about it. We're gonna get this unloaded and then we're gonna go and run back and pick up the next one and then unload that and see what it is that we've got. Thanks for all the hard work, Will. One, two, ah! Hey, hey, there we go. That is a big old drill press. You know what we should have done though? What? Brought it slightly closer to where we were going to leave it. <laughs> this is in the middle of the workshop. Okay, let's go get the other one. Let's unload that once we got it. I'll see you in a sec. Okay, we got the second one. It's right here in the bed of the truck. We just got to get it off there. Goodness gracious me, that's heavy. Okay. Oh, oh. These are some beastly drill presses. We've got them off the truck. This one still needs to come off the pallet. This one here looks to be the most heavy duty of the two in terms of the largest motor. This one is pulley, um, pulley driven. So it's different pulleys to adjust speed. This one's a variable speed. So my thinking is we put this one here over by what's going to be the machining area since it's going to be a little bit of a, hopefully a heavier duty drill press, you know, maybe run a, uh, run a larger drill pit with a little more, a little more oomph. This one here. <laughs> So I changed my original plan. We're actually gonna put the pulley driven one over here since it is 110, runs off a normal little plug. And there's a normal little plug right down there that looks like it suits it just fine. Whereas the other one is gonna be a little bit more complex. I think it's a 220. And on this side of the workshop, we've got uh, plenty of space and some conduit run ready for us to set up whatever it is we need. So this now isn't gonna go by the mill. It's gonna go here in front of that little speaker there where Will's sweeping. <laughs> Thank goodness we have hearing protection on. Oh, oh. oh my goodness. So the electrics, there, there's a problem with it. There is uh, something that is missing and that is indeed a problem. But there is also, there is also an issue here with the quill in that. It won't lower past this. But I think we know what it is. This whole system here is notched out and there's a gear up here and it's super gummed up. All of this fell out of that while he was poking in there earlier. So, we've got that jammed up gear in here, and I think what we're gonna try to do, because, oh uh, no, you can't really see it from the top. We might need to take out this entire spindle, which is fine, because this belt has a break in it anyway. So we need to take that belt off. See, we've got that big nasty split in there. We can go get a new one of those. And, uh, oh man, I think that we can get in from the top. Uh, take off this plate. I'm gonna go ahead and spray some stuff in there and see if we can get it to come loose. There we go. So now that we've got the drill press moving freely, feeling good, uh, it's a little bit, a little bit nasty right now. So we're just gonna go through and clean it the heck up. There you go. We got a, uh, got a nice drill press here. That is a nice top right there. A single little drill bit crater in there. That's pretty impressive, right? That's really Have you ever seen a drill press that hasn't got a drill bit crater? Not one that is like 50 or 60 years old, I haven't. <laughs> so in other news, my electrician is here having a look at this, uh, the variable speed drill press. Have a look at that. Have a listen. Yep, that is not good. This was the expensive one and all the wires are all crunchy and nasty. He thinks it's been overheated, overworked at some point. So uh, that's an issue. The drill presses are looking lovely. As you saw, we then assembled some cubes for the office. We then moved the hammer back. Now Will then was thinking about welding carts. 
You kind of didn't think that this, this whole thing worked. With a little brainstorming, we came up with a really cool idea to save some space. We make a cart that sits over the MIG welder. I'm going to draw the MIG welder with a dotted line. That's the MIG welder. There's the bottle of the MIG welder. This cart's going to wheel over the top of the MIG welder with a little bit of space to the top of the MIG welder. And on this cart is going to be space for the plasma cutter, the TIG welder, and then back here, space for the argon bottle for the TIG welder. So now what we've got to do is we have to look at the steel rack, see what steel we have, and then design something that's going to fit those two welders and work with the materials we have to work for the welding cart. So while I'm cracking on with the welder cart, I'm gonna go ahead and forge a heck ton of paper towel roll holders and a door handle and a couple of hooks. We got an axe one over here, and a knife one, and then we've got the hammer one. I'm back on the welder cart. This is looking pretty awesome. You're gonna note that this is not just any welder cart. This is a fancy schmancy welding cart. Oh no, no. Works. That was meant to work a little bit better than that. Yeah, we're supposed to be able to roll it on. You're not supposed to have to pick it up. Um, so I guess the measurements weren't quite there. This was almost a fancy schmancy welding cart. Now it's a... Just a regular schmancy welding cart. Yeah. Well, the idea was that this plate would pivot so that you could then easily roll on the argon bottle. And now, however, you've got to lift it up past those bolts. So it's no longer quite so fancy schmancy, but uh, the idea was there. I just hope that if you guys try it, you execute it a little bit better than us. Wow. For a shop with a whole lot of measuring tapes in it, we really aren't very good at measuring things, are we? No. Only just recently did we find out, Alec, do you have that measuring tape? Oh yeah, this is amazing. Neither of us knew this, and it's really embarrassing because every person that I've asked or talked about to it since we found it out has been like, oh yeah, I knew that. It's this. So here, at the end of a tape measure, this thing is always loose, and my whole life I've thought to myself, goodness gracious, tape measures are terrible, they're so inaccurate. Well, a friend of ours recently told us that actually, that's there on purpose, so that you can butt up against something and get the same measurement as pulling back against something, because this measurement from the end of the tape to the one inch mark isn't an inch. It actually perfectly accounts for this slop right here. So you don't need to worry when you push it up against something or you pull it back. It's designed that way and you don't need to hammer those rivets uh, tight. Who'd, who'd do that? We're going to continue on with the welding cart at another point in time. We're actually needing to get ready for the arrival of the crate at last. But before we finish off the video, these beautiful things here. Which basically built the welding cart for us. You remember recently, Jason from Fireball Tools visited and he helped us build welding benches. He helped us build that industrial bed frame. And uh, he's just an awesome guy. And he's not just a welder and a fabricator. He's also a little bit of an inventor. He invented this product here that just saves the bacon out of anybody that fabricates anything. It is the Fireball Tool Mega Square. This is the 12-inch Mega Square that he makes. This is it in cast iron. They also do another square in aluminum. Yep, so they make all the squares in cast iron and aluminum.
Uh oh. This is one of the aluminium ones, alum aluminium ones. It obviously is much lighter, so it's a little easier to get into place. He also has cast iron in squares like this, and in the mega squares like this. This is a little small one, this is an eight inch one. And these things are unbelievable, because this is not just a carpenter's square. This, this isn't just something that you check for square on. These are just an unbelievably versatile jig that you use to set up your work and make sure that things are parallel or square or 45 degrees. We have two parallel eight inch sides here on the small, 12 inch on the big. You've got 90 degrees, you've got 45 degrees down here. You've got all sorts of shapes that you can play with and they have threaded holes in them that allow you to put tabs on them that allow you to use this machine surface on the side which is parallel to the bottom and square to the faces to index to make sure that your pieces are not twisted this way and that way. It is just a phenomenal way of fabricating. And the reason we learned so much when Jason was here is really mainly because of these things here. We're not for the jigs, we're not for all of that. It would have been a hell of a lot longer learning curve to actually make something that was relatively square. These are made in Spokane, Washington. So made in the USA. Phenomenal product and I'm very pleased that we have got a discount code for you guys. Jason and I have teamed up to give you guys 5% off your order when you use code FORGE at fireballtool.com. I get a kickback from that too which is fantastic. This is a phenomenal square. You should note that these are back ordered right now so any order orders that you place this square, probably not going to ship until February or so. Anything that is in stock from your order is going to be shipping as soon as that order comes through though. Go grab yourself a square, it's worth the wait. Don't forget to use that coupon code FORGE for that 5% off. Thank you Jason, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I can't wait to bring you along on the next one when that crate arrives. Pleasure as always, bye bye.